Welcome to the Screen the Screener College Basketball Podcast with your hosts, Mike Randall and Gus Kearns. Welcome back to the Screen the Screener College Basketball Podcast, where we continue our previews of the college basketball framework, all the teams across the country, 357. And today we go down to look at Louisville, Louisville men's basketball with the great Shannon Russell from the Courier Journal. We've had Shannon on before in the past. She's talked about Xavier, has a ton of basketball knowledge, and is coming today to talk about the Cardinals and preview them for the 2021-2022 season. Follow her on Twitter at SL Russell. Shannon, welcome back to the podcast. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for having me. So Louisville, interesting year last year with Chris Mack. Of course, we could probably do a separate podcast and everything with the assistant coach, but we're going to focus on basketball here. Just talk about the expectations coming into the season, sort of what's up and down for them and how COVID may have affected it. A season that ended up falling short of the NCAA tournament, which I know is disappointing for Louisville. Absolutely. So Louisville had two long COVID pauses during the season, and that really uh, derailed a lot of what they wanted to do, add in uh, injuries in a a very um, limited bench, and they had a lot of uh, things to overcome last season. So, you know, Louisville ended 13-7, and uh, 8-5 and in the ACC, and was just left out of the NCAA tournament. But I think that being in a room and watching the show together – Uh, will motivate these guys heading into this year, which it's obviously a a new look roster and some new coaches, uh, assistant coaches this year. So, but I think that last year's ending and the way that that went down is, is huge motivation going into this season. Yeah, and it was interesting with Louisville because we, we're up here in New Jersey, so we were watching them, got off to a really fast start, stumbled against Wisconsin, but was actually 9-1, and 4-0 and in the ACC, and then things sort of went off the rails there with the loss away at Miami, which was odd. Florida State is tough. They rebounded against Duke, which was great, but never really got going after that hot start. You know, I think part of it was they were waiting for Malik Williams to come back, um, uh, priming for their team captain who'd had a a foot injury. And when he did come back, he only lasted three games before he got injured again. So he wasn't um, an impact like they thought that he might be. And, you know, these guys with such a short short bench that, you know, they were playing a ton of minutes. So it was hard to ask the backcourt to do more than what they already were doing because they were logging almost all the minutes and scoring most of the points and, you know, they're being the playmakers. So I think just some youth, some untested guys got thrown into the fire um, and Louisville just kind of ran out of steam and at times when it mattered most. Yeah. And we'll talk about the players that are returning, but one of the bright spots last year, uh, the transfer in from Radford was Carly Jones. We loved watching him at Radford, had a big shot, I believe, to send the team to the NCAA tournament, I think a couple of years ago, uh, but they lose him and David Johnson. So just talk about those players that are not coming back. Carly now in the NBA and, and looks to be flourishing. Yes. I mean, Carly, he was, he was great for the year he was here. There was a lot of questions of whether he could um, play to the level of ACC competition coming from Radford, and he did that very well. He has zero fear, and so he was a lot of fun to watch. Uh, he and David Johnson, who was drafted um, by Toronto in the last mm-hmm. draft, they were the backcourt, and they scored 43% of, um, of Louisville's points. So they had a lot of uh, expectations and workload on their shoulders. Um, And they were what kind of stirred the drink for Louisville. They were what made it go. So losing those two guys to the NBA uh, is was the you know, was paramount to to fill those spots. Um, And also Louisville lost a couple other guys, Josh Nickelberry, a guard transferred to LaSalle and Quinn Slazinski, a forward, went to Iona. So they had a lot of openings on their roster, um, which they filled uh, and then some in the offseason. Now with the players returning, and we'll get there's a lot of new faces coming in. They have a very strong class of players coming in, really revamp the program, if you will, from a personnel standpoint. But it starts with the veterans coming back. And Shannon, we've talked to a ton of, of reporters as well as head coaches who have all cited the fact that it is going to be a challenge to get people to blend in. Like all these transfers going back and forth, it makes a lot of fun for us because we get content to talk about, but it is going to be a challenge. So I think there's even a greater emphasis on those key veteran Cardinal players that are returning. I think so. Uh, but I also think Louisville has blown everything up. I mean, they haven't, they haven't decimated what they've done on offense or defense, but offensively in particular, uh, one of the new uh, coaches, uh, his name is Ross McMains. He was brought in because he's going to help them with uh, pacing and tempo and getting their offense moving more. So in a sense, it's, 
you know, it's a good time for a lot of guys to come into Louisville because everyone's learning some new things right now. It's not the, the status quo of what had been the last three years at at Louisville. So, uh, you know, I think having some of those veterans, uh, Malik Williams, as we've mentioned, he's healthy now. And, you know, he's a huge part of, of this team really taking a step forward, but even he's learning some new, new aspects of the office offense, sorry, um, as they get ready to go this season. Yeah. And I would think Malik Williams, Jalen Withers and Samuel Williamson are going to be sort of the, the core group there. That's a big front line, six, seven, six, eight, six, eleven, solid players, double, double machines. I think they're going to serve as a foundation and they're going to be one of the bigger teams in the ACC. Absolutely. And, you know, I think with Jalen Weathers in particular, you're going to see him really flourish because last year he played out of position at the five because Malik Williams was hurt. Mm -hmm. This year you'll see him more at the four, not saying he won't play the five, you know, at times, but being in his more natural position where he can step out, stretch the defense, shoot threes, you know, it's going to be a huge help for this team while having, uh, you know, a a taller, more robust front court um, heading into the season. Before we talk about the freshmen, let's get to some of the transfers. Uh, of course, Noah Locke from Florida, we know. And the other one that was really interesting that came in that, that is very exciting is Mason Faulkner coming in and transferring as well. So talk about the new guys. Mason Faulkner, these are guys that can make an impact right away, not the freshmen, but th- there's a lot of depth here. But some of these fr- from th- some of these transfers coming in, like uh, Jared West, who was with Marshall, Noah Locke, I- I- Mason Faulkner, I think they can make a real impact immediately. Yeah, you know, so Jared West came from Marshall, four-year Marshall player. Mason Faulkner played at Northern Kentucky University and Western Carolina. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Noah Locke from from Florida and Matt Cross, who played at Miami and transferred uh, midseason to start this season. Those four guys starting right there, I mean – Jared West and and Mason Faulkner, they've they've had a whole college career behind them. I mean, they they know how to play in big games. They know how to play with different teams. And I think that from just a leadership standpoint, it's going to be going to be huge. In fact, Jared West is one of the co-captains. He and Malik Williams have been voted by their teammates as captains. Um, Then you've got two guys that are coming from junior colleges, um, L. Ellis. Uh, a very explosive guard, and then Sidney Curry, who uh, committed to Kansas, decommitted, and then picked Louisville, came later um, in the offseason, arrived around July 15th. So Sidney Curry is really, uh, you know, a fascinating one to watch because he's six foot eight. He's he's down 22 pounds and hopes to get down probably another 20 pounds um, and play around 270 this season. But he's going to be a guy that pushes others off the block and really – um, bangs in the paint and is, you know, he's a left-handed, so left-handed guy. So I'm really intrigued by him. Um, and those, then the other two new, newcomers are freshmen, Mike James and Roosevelt uh, Wheeler. But having six guys that come in with basketball experiences is, is just huge for this Louisville team. Was L. Ellis, uh, you know, one of the top Juco players in the country, was he a focus because of Carleek? I, I would think, you know, Chris Mack's system and, and Louisville basketball, of course, you know, one of the, the perennial top programs really is dependent on solid guard play. And it's you, you've seen how difficult it can be for certain teams who struggle to find the point guard. Kansas is the one that popped to mind last year, another great program like Louisville, but really struggled without the leader. L. Ellis is a combo guard, but I would think that replacing Carleek Jones may fall on some of his shoulders. Absolutely. And, you know, L. L. Ellis, he's um, he won the dunk contest at Louisville Live, kind of their their fan friendly tip. That matters. Yeah, (laughs) that does. But he has, uh, you know, he is is probably one of the top two athletic guys on the team. And he's fast and he's just uh, he's great at seeing the court. So, you know, he had committed to Louisville um, in his first year at the junior college. He's a two-time junior college All-American, and he's got uh, just a great skill set to be able to move that ball fast the way they want to do. You know, Carly couldn't go as fast as maybe he would want to do because mm-hmm. he had to take care of a lot of other things on the team and account for the points and the rebounding and get to the line. So I think it's going to be nice to see everyone being able to kind of do their job and have someone in relief to kind of pick up after him. I would think coming into this year, listen, Chris Mack is an excellent coach, one of the best in the country. But it's been sort of an odd assimilation here to Louisville. That first year, they make the NCAA tournament as a seven seed. They lose to Minnesota. Next year, we have a shortened because of COVID. They're 24 and 7, 15 and 5 in the ACC, no postseason. The year, uh, last year, they come in, they play in the ACC tournament, they lose to Duke, they end up not making the tournament. I would think this is a big focus for them. And I'm curious, how did they attack the non conference? Because that can, you know, you're going to have a high rating because you're in the ACC, you're going to play in one of the best leagues in the country. 
But what is their their plan here for the non-conference? Because really, this is a big year for Coach Mack. You know, I'm sure the fans want the Cardinals back in the tournament and winning a couple games here, and he certainly has the talent to do that. Sure. I think I'd start by saying that, um, I mean, I, I'm assuming most people know this, but Chris Mack will not be coaching the first six games of the season because of a, a suspension related to the Dino Gaudio situation. Um, so Mike Pegues, the his assistant who was with him at Xavier, will be leading the team in those first six games. But I think that this team is, you know, the, the core guys that are back and the guys that have come aboard, they're so hungry to win that it's going to be, you know, they're, I'd watch out. I'd watch out if you're the teams playing Louisville, these first six conference, non-conference games, sorry, because they really have a lot to prove. And they seem to have a really good chemistry so far. They've spoken very highly of one another. Um, and there's an upgrade in talent overall and also just like in depth because they have 14 guys on 13 scholarships at this point. Um, Malik Williams doesn't count towards the total because of COVID. I'm not, that's not saying they might not redshirt someone. I don't know what the plan is right before the season, but, you know, looking at the schedule, they start with, you know, Southern is their opener and they are, you know, that's going to be huge after two exhibition games, which they didn't have last year. So they're going to be able to like kind of, um, you know, they have a, a lot on their, on their shoulders to prove after last year, none of these guys came to Louisville to lose. So I think they're really going to show, show out um, against Southern and they have Furman Navy, Detroit Mercy, um, and then they go to uh, the Bahamas to play uh, Ole Miss. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, Mississippi State, and then they play Maryland or Richmond. And then Shannon, will Coach Mack be back for the Bahamas, or will he miss a game in that in that tournament as well? He will miss both games in the Bahamas. He wow. returns from Michigan State at Michigan State in the um, the ACC Big Ten challenge yeah <laughs> that's you're gonna come back that's the one to come back yeah. for sure that's a big one yeah shannon thank you for a few minutes i know you're super busy covering football also last question then we'll get you out of here so what do you see for the cardinals this year obviously the expectation is to compete for the acc title they have some controversy with chris mack being out for a few games but he'll write the ship i guess i'll ask you this what would be a satisfying season for Cardinals fans? What are they looking for? They're looking for a sweet 16. What do you think, given what's gone on here and everything going on with COVID, what do you think would get the satisfaction of the Cardinal fans for a season here in Louisville? I think a final four would be the trick. Wow. Okay. You know, I think this is a really deep team. Like I said, I think there's a lot of intriguing pieces, whether they can put it together is the question, but you know, knowing there's been times, one time at Xavier when Chris Max Beck was against the wall, the team had lost six games in a row. Mm-hmm. Um, he galvanized that group and they finished in the Elite Eight. So I think that having all this stuff in the offseason and a complete roster overhaul um, will be exactly the, the ticket for Louisville to kind of come in with a huge chip on their shoulders and say, hey, we're here, we're back, and we're going to win. With the talent that Louisville has, Chris Mack at the helm, and the entire Cardinal fan base behind them, the expectations are high, but they have the talent and ability to meet that for sure. Folks, Shannon Russell, Louisville men's basketball beat writer, Courier Journal, amazing job as always. It has so much knowledge, gave us a few minutes here. Follow her on Twitter at SL Russell. Shannon, thank you so much for a few minutes. We'd love to catch up during the season, and I can't wait to see the team down in the Bahamas. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. i